Omagyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanyena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Precharine Nirvasesha Sunyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Vanchakaupata Rubjasya Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavan Hebyo Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So welcome everyone to our Ishopanishad. We actually finished the mantras. I just want to go over this one uh, PowerPoint presentation with you, which we have. I didn't show you so far. I thought it would be interesting. Can you see? Yes, my yes, very clear. I can see it, yeah? Yes, my Raj. Good. Okay, so the first section, you'll remember, oh, <laughs> mantras one to three, about the proprietorship and the laws of God, right? What was the term? What's the Sanskrit term for proprietor? Ishyavasya. Ishyavasya, yeah, Ishyavasya. Or can all, Ishavasha can also mean God-centered and the center of all the activities and the, that he's the proprietor of everything. And then the laws of God that we should only take our quota. When you take your quota then you can, uh, may live hundreds of years. Uh, and if we take more than our quota then we will get a lot of problems, we get a lot of reactions. We enter into the darkest region of ignorance. So that was described in the first section, mantras 1 to 3, and then mantra 4 to 8 described the vision of the Mahabhagavata. Right? What's the vision? Who knows the vision of the Mahabhagavata? Can you describe to me? Ekatvam Anupashyatam. Meaning? Meaning, uh, everything is same. The means is uh, understand Krishna's inconceivable nature and potencies, and uh, everything is the same in this uh, like like the Jivatma and the Paramatma all same in quality, and uh, everything belongs to Krishna. Same in quality, different in quantity, right? One in quality, but different in quantity. Right. So Mahabhagavata, you can see the oneness. Section 3 describes mantras 9 to 14, the absolute and the relative. First of all, in terms of knowledge, we spoke about the different knowledges, types of knowledge, right? What, what are the... What, are they called? What's absolute knowledge? Knowledge of the absolute is called what? Vidya. Vidya, yeah, Vidya. Knowledge of the absolute. Where will we find that? How will we get knowledge of the absolute? In the scriptures, Maharaj. Yes. Which scriptures? Vedas. 
Veda. Okay. In the Veda. Did you make it? Gita. A Bhagavad Gita, yeah, Bhagavad Gita. Srimad Bhagavatam, right. More likely, yeah. The Vedas is also there, but not so easy to find. Okay. From and then what about Abhidya? How do we get knowledge of Abhidya? We should go in the material world and enjoy, eh? Go out in, and enjoy the world. Go out and try to enjoy anyway. Go into the material life. Is that right? Is that how we get avidya? How do we get knowledge of avidya? Practicing the 18 items. Cultivating the 18 items. What are these 18 items about? Well, they're about knowledge, right? You said the, the 18 items of knowledge, right? Cultivating these, those different, different qualities which were there. Can you tell me some of the items? What are some, what are some of these 18 items? Can you tell me the first one? Becoming a proper gentleman and learn to give proper respect to others. Okay, yeah. Very good. Yes. Developing good character, respecting others and being humble, not being pr proud, mm -hmm. offering respect and any other things you remember? I should become a, an unalloyed devotee of Krishna. Yes, very good. Yeah, we should become a non like devotee of Krishna. How can we become a non What do we need to do to become a non like devotee of Krishna? Serving. Yeah. Serving. How? Where do we learn? Who teaches us how to serve? Spiritual master. Yes, yeah, spiritual master will train us how to serve, how to become the pure devotee. Right. So this is all items of knowledge. These kind of things, we have to cultivate an understanding of the nature of the material world. We have to understand the material world, how it's temporary. We have to understand uh, that, the hap that there's, uh, we have to understand the temporary nature of the relationships of the body. So this is all knowledge, knowledge of avidya, it's knowledge about material world, understanding how it's temporary and how it's actually the cause of a lot of misery, a lot of suffering from the material world. And our real home is in the spiritual world, so that's knowledge. And then worship, 12 to 14, right? So how do we, what are some different methods of worship of the relative. How do people worship the relative? Demigod worship my right? Yes, demigod worship. And what else? What's also relative worship? Impersonal Brahman. Worship of the impersonal Brahman is also relative, right? Because the impersonal, the impersonalists, they simply negate everything. So they, they negate the relative, but it's still relative, but they just negate it. And the worship of the Absolute, that is actually devotional service. So devotional service, do you get, some people say it's all one, you get the same result. If you worship the Absolute or you worship the relative, if you worship the demigods and you worship Krishna, it's all one, it's all the same. So what do we say? How will you argue against this? Sometimes we go to Calcutta, not to Mumbai. Right. Yeah. Buy a ticket, it will go to one place, not going, it's not all the same. Okay. 
Yeah, and, and some other, do you know any verses from the scriptures? What does it say in the Bhagavad Gita or in the Ishopanishad? What does it say? In the Ishopanishad, it says one result is obtained by worship of the Supreme. And a different result is obtained by worshipping what is not the Supreme. It's actually stated there in one of the mantras, I think mantra 13 or 14, 13 I think. And then in Bhagavad Gita Krishna says, worshippers of the demigod will go to the planets of the demigods. Worship of the forefathers will go to the forefathers, planet of the forefathers. Worship of the ghosts will go to the planet of the ghosts, but my devotee will come to me, Krishna says. Okay, so different kinds of worship. And then in the final section, the prayers at the time of death. How, does it, what did, the, how did the devotee pray in the Ishopanishad? What did he say? Do you remember the prayer? Anything he said? What did he ask the Lord to remember? All the sacrifices. At the time of death, if I forget. What forget did you? So, uh, at the time of death, if I forget you, uh, my Lord, please. Uh, uh, what? Take me back with you or something like that, Maharaj. Please remember all that I have done for you. You. Okay. Right? That's a, the prayer. Please remember all that I have done for you. So, have you, uh, have you got a lot to do? I mean, if you pray like that, will it be reasonable? Have you done a lot for Krishna? Did you do a lot of hearing and chanting? Are you ready to die? <laughs> we have to be ready. We don't know when we have to die, right? Yes. That was the yes. question. So Maharaj Pariksha said, what is the duty, one who's about to die? And what is the duty of all people at all time? The answer was the same for everyone. So we should be ready. Okay, somebody read this. Rukmini Pati Prabhu read. Maharaj, I can't see anything on my screen. Oh, really? Yes, Maharaj. Why not? What happened, I wonder? Uh, I, I don't know. I think... Uh, Patita Pavan Prabhu, can you help me? Let me close it up. I'll close it up. Krishna Prabhu, just now when Maharaj is sharing, uh, all of us are able to see it. Can you see it, Prabhu? Yes, yes, Maharaj. I, there's nothing wrong with your screen yes, sharing. Maharaj. Can you see it now, Rukmini Pari? All of us can see, Maharaj. Yeah, you okay, so somebody, uh, well, somebody who can see it, they can read. Mantra 4 to 5. Sorry, Maharaj. Maharaj. Yeah, go ahead, you read the Mataji Nantini, that's it. Yes, Maharaj. Although fixed in his abode, the personality of God is greater than the mind and can overcome all others running. The Supreme Lord walks and does not walk. He is far away, but He is very near as well. He is within everything, and yet He is outside of everything. Okay, wait, let's go. Where's the next slide? Go ahead. In the Vishnu Purana, his potencies are compared to the heat and light that emanate from a fire. Although situated in one place, a fire can distribute its light and heat for some distance. Similarly, the absolute personality of body, although fixed in its transcendental abode, can diffuse his different energies everywhere. Mantra for Go ahead. Tat duri tat vandike, 
He is far away, but he is very near as well. And at the same time, Antike, very near, very near. Just like Krishna is standing here, one has to understand very near. He has kindly come to you near, so near that you can touch his lotus feet, you can offer him some food stuffs, you can decorate him, he is agreeing. Yes, I will accept. Go ahead. How does he accept? That is called Durasta, very, very far away. At the same time, Antike, immediately. Provided you know the means, if you know, then you can see. That is God's power. He can remain far, far away, but he can immediately be approachable by the devotees. Okay. So, Prabhupada's lecture on Ishopanishad. Oh, Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita. Okay. Can read? I can now see the screen, Maharaj. Okay, so you can read. Yes, Maharaj. The contradiction given here proves the inconceivable potencies of the Lord. He walks and he does not walk. Ordinarily, if someone can walk, it is illogical to say he cannot walk. But in reference to God, such a contradiction simply serves to indicate his inconceivable powers. Okay. So here's your ekadvam anupashyataha. Ekadvam, oneness, and anupashyataha, constantly see, see through authority. Go ahead, Rant Rukmini Pati. Ekadvam anupashyataha. The Isopanishad advises Ekatvam Anupashyata, a devotee should see the Supreme Personality of Godhead to be situated in everyone's heart and should also see every living entity as an eternal servant of the Lord. This vision is called Ekatvam Oneness. Jai. Go ahead. Although there is a relationship of master and servant, both master and servant are one because of their spiritual identity. This is also Ekatvam. Thus, the conception of Ekatvam for the Vaishnava is different from that of the Mayavadi. Okay. okay, so when we speak about oneness, we, we also speak of oneness. Devotees, we speak of oneness. Prabhupada gives the example. Oneness, the spiritual master and the servant, the disciple are one. Why? Because of their spiritual identity. Right? How is it they're one? Well, they're one in quality, right? Where is the one where is the oneness? In the soul. Well the soul is different. The spiritual master and the servant are different souls. Spiritual yes, master is yes. a soul, the servant is also a soul. So where is the oneness? Huh? Everybody is Atma. Yeah. But the point is that they're one in quality uh, the, the one is in their, their desire, they have the same desire, the same interest. Prabhu to serve the Lord, Maharaj. Yes, to serve the Lord, right. Just like in the family, all the members of the family, they're one. They have, you know, they're a joint family, they all have the same interest to help the family. So the same way, the, the, the spiritual teacher and the disciple are one because the servant of the spiritual teacher desires to serve the master and the master, he's the servant of Krishna. And so the same way, they're both one in their interest. Their interest is to serve Krishna. But for the Mayavadi, the Mayavadi, their idea of one is they actually become one. They, actually, they claim that they actually give up their individuality. 
and they merge into the oneness with no more activity, they claim that they lose, they give up their individuality. But in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, we're always individuals, eternally. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, in the second chapter, never was there a time when I did not exist, nor you, nor all of these kings, nor in the future will any of us cease to be. So Krishna is saying in the past, now and in the future, we're all eternally individuals. But the Mayavadis, they claim that, oh no, now we're individuals, but we'll, when we get liberation, we'll become one, we'll lose our individuality. So we don't agree, we have a different, but we, we speak of oneness, one, oneness in the desire, the interest. Just like the Christians, they often quote from the Bible. In the Bible it says, Jesus said, I and the Father are one. And they say this means Jesus is the Father, Jesus is God. But we say no, it means he's the Son of God. Jesus said, I sit on the right hand side of my Father. So there's the Son and the Father. Jesus is the Son and God is the Father. Jesus, his interest is to love God and to serve the Father, so he has the same interest. But he's an individual, he doesn't lose, it doesn't mean that he's the Father, he's the Son. The Son is the servant of the Father, so they're one in that sense. Okay, so it's a different understanding of oneness. Okay. Rukmini Pati, read. Yes, Mataji. This is a description of the Mahabhagavata, the great personality who sees everything in relation to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Remember, we were describing their different devotees, different visions. Remember, there was a, on the top, there was the Uttama Adhikari. Yes. And, and below the Uttama Adhikari was, who were they? Madhyama. Uh-huh. And who else? Madhyama Adhikari and then the Kanista Adhikari. Right, right. So then the, the Uttama Adhikari and sometimes also the Madhyam Adhikari also may, Madhyam may also be a Mahabhagavata. One who is on the Madhyam platform, he may also be a Mahabhagavata. And he may also see all things in relation to the Personality of Godhead. So those two, the, the Madhyam and the Uttama, they may see everything in relation to the Supreme. Then we spoke about this Apapa Vidam. Remember Apapa Vidam? Who knows the meaning? Apapa Vidam? Pure and uncontaminated. Oh, uncontaminated. Can it be contaminated? Right. Read. Apapa Vidam. This is most important part of this verse. No sin can pollute Krishna. There cannot be any sinful actions. Your laws cannot restrict Krishna. For you, there may be so many restrictive laws. Sometimes less intelligent class of men they criticize Krishna, how he enjoyed the company of so many young girls. So? We know when Krishna was a young young boy in Vrindavan, he had Rasalila. So what what age was he when he did the Rasalila? Five years old, Maharaj. No, eight. Eight. Yeah, eight years old. He picked up Govardhan Hill when he was seven, and when he was eight, he performed Rasalila. So, if an eight-year-old boy is with young girls, you don't worry about it. You don't take it very seriously. So, Krishna, Krishna was having some company with the young girls, but he was an eight-year-old boy at the time. You know, it's not proper to criticize him. And we have to understand the nature of Krishna and, and his pastimes. You see, people who do not understand Krishna 
they will criticize him. Of course, to understand Krishna is not so easy. Before we can understand Krishna, we have to understand who we are. We have to understand that we are all souls. We have to understand we are not the body, we are all souls. If we can understand that we are the soul, not the body, then we can go on to understand Krishna. And that Krishna has a body, but remember his body is not like our body. Remember, we were saying his body is not a material body. He has a body which is different from our body. His body doesn't suffer old age, disease and death. His body is of a different nature. So people who don't know criticize these things. They can't understand. But Krishna is apap vidam, meaning no sin can pollute him. You know, if you or I go with the young girls to the forest, it's a different thing. But for Krishna, he's apap vidam. He he's not subject to any sinful action because he is he's the supreme Lord. He's the creator of the material nature. Everything comes from him. So he's not under the, the laws of the material nature. We are. Okay. Go ahead, Prabhu. They were wives of other persons. So how is it so? So the answer was given that Krishna cannot be contaminated. Rather, anything comes to Krishna, even if contaminated mind becomes purified. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> you, I was saying Krishna's eight year olds. How old were these girls? They were young girls. Because in Vedic times, remember 5,000 years ago, in those times the girls would be married very young. When they were young children, they would be married. So that's why they were wives, although still they were very young, five, six, seven years old, like that, they were young girls. Okay, so these things have to be understood very carefully. If, one, if we haven't understood the ABC, if we haven't understood the basic knowledge, then we won't be able to understand things like Krishna's pastimes. So it's important for us to learn the basics first. If we want to understand mathematics, first you have to begin with the simple arithmetic. If you don't know arithmetic, you'll never understand advanced mathematics. So similarly, to understand Krishna's pastimes, first we have to understand the basic of spiritual knowledge. Then we can go on to understand Krishna, how Krishna cannot be polluted. Okay, so Shudam, read Prabhu. Most purified, the sun extracts moisture from untouchable place, yet it remains pure, purifies obnoxious things by virtue of its sterilizing powers. Okay, so two qualities, Shudam and Apavidam. Shudam is purifies obnoxious things, can sterilize, has the power to sterilize things. It's antiseptic and cannot be contaminated, apap vidam, prophylactic, cannot be contaminated. So those two qualities are there. And then we went on to speak about this haranmayena patrena. Remember, who knows the meaning? Gandharvika Radharani, do you remember Haranmayena Patrena? Gandharvika Radharani, are you there tonight? Yep, 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 one second. Um, 
is is it removing the effulgence? Yes, right. Haran Haran Mayena means effulgence, right? And Patrena covering. And so the in the prayer, the devotee prays to remove that covering. Is it we just want to see the golden effulgence? Do you just want to see the golden effulgence? Like to see the Lord's face? Yes, right. You want to see the face of the Lord. We don't just want to see the light, right? So Satya Shyapi Tamukam. I want to see your face. I want to see that the Lord's features. That's important. Gandharvika Radharani can read. Your real face is covered by your dazzling effulgence. Kindly remove that covering and exhibit yourself. Mantra 15. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So the devote, we want to see the personal feature. We don't want to be attracted by the impersonal feature. Go ahead. The living entity should never be considered the all-powerful supreme truth. If he were... If he were the Supreme, he would not need to pray to the Lord to remove his dazzling cover so that the living entity could see his real face. Yeah, we're praying. It's a prayer. So when we pray, we pray to someone, right? We want someone to hear our prayer. And so we're praying to someone we want to see. So if, if we are God, we don't need to pray. If we ourselves are God, then why would we pray to someone? Some people say we're all God. If we're all God, we don't need to pray. Go ahead, Gandharvika. The demons who are killed by Krishna, they are immediately transferred to this Brahman of Fulgens. So just imagine, the place which is given to the enemies of Krishna, is that very comfortable, is that very comfortable thing? Alright. Do, you know do you know the names of some demons killed by Krishna? Agasura. Okay, yeah. Agasura, Bhutana, mm -hmm. Devatra. Okay. Yeah. So the, when the demons are killed by Krishna, they get impersonal liberation. They go to the Brahman. Right? So Prabhupada is saying, you know, why be a yogi and practice yoga and go to the same place where the demons go? We want to get better. We should get better than the demons. But we don't just want to go there where all the demons are, we want to go to a better place than that. So, this is a Brahman effulgence, it's a place given to all the demons who kill Krishna kills. <laughs> we don't want to go there and be with them. We want to go f and then, we did this verse. Om Kratos Mara Kritam Smara Kratos Mara Kritam Smara Meaning, yeah, can there be? Karta is the supreme beneficiary. Karta, all that I have done for you. Oh my Lord, please remember all my sacrifices because you are the ultimate beneficiary. Please remember all that I have done for you. So, you, what sacrifices have you done? Did chanting, you, hearing oh, classes. Oh, yeah, okay, good. You did chanting, you did hearing classes. Yeah. Did you go Harinam Sankirtan? I used to, Maharaj. Did you? Really? Yeah, yeah I used to. Just not here, not in KL. There's COVID everywhere. Where did you used to go Harinam? Um, in Perth, Maharaj, when I was in Perth. In Perth? What, you're from Australia? No, Maharaj. I was born and brought up here. I went there to study and then just lived there for a bit and then I came back. Oh, okay. You became a devotee there, huh? No, Maharaj. I was a born devotee. Oh, really? You're a born devotee? Wow, you're, oh, you're so lucky. You must be a great soul. Not really. You were a fallen yogi then. <laughs> From your last life, you were a yogi and you take birth in a devotee family. 
Okay, so we pray to Krishna, please remember all my sacrifices, all my Harinams, all my book distribution. <laughs> Please remember all the offerings I made for you. I heard your classes. I read about you. I chanted your name. Okay. So it's yeah, okay, you can read. Go ahead. Even if at the time of death a devotee does not remember his service to the Lord, the Lord does not forget him. This prayer is given to remind the Lord of the devotee's sacrifices. But even if there is no such reminder, the Lord does not forget the service rendered by his pure devotee. Mantra 17 per fault. Okay. Of course, we hope we can remember. We don't want to... We, we like to give service to Krishna, not take service to Krishna. If we can't, if we're not able to remember Krishna, <laughs> we prefer that we can, you know, it's better if we can remember Krishna rather than depend on Krishna to remember us. <laughs> so, Prabhupada, Prabhupada, uh, you can see when Prabhupada was leaving the world, he was in Vrindavan and he had all the devotees chant for him. And he had devotee read the book also, sit by his side and read the book. And he wore the deity, the garland from the deities, like that, everything to help him to remember Krishna. So Krishna remembers, Krishna doesn't forget the service of his pure devotee. Okay, so understanding, summarized, mantras. 4 to 8, 15 to 18, preaching application, discussed application. Discussed the application of Tadure Tadvantike. What does it mean? Tadure Tadvantike? Yeah, he's very near, but he's also. Far away, right. So, so Krishna is very near. He's in our heart. Yeah. He's in your home, right? Okay. He's everywhere, he's with us in the holy name, but he's also far away. And his, he has his abode there in the spiritual world, Tadvantike. We like, you know, one day we may like to go there to the spiritual world to be with Krishna in his abode. So, while we're here, he's also with us. For the devotee, it doesn't make any difference where he goes. He knows Krishna's everywhere. Heaven or hell or liberation. It's all the same for the devotee. He's going to do service for Krishna everywhere. If he goes to hell, hell can become heaven by doing devotional service. But if we go to heaven and there's no Krishna and no devotional service, then heaven will become like hell. So we, the important thing is devotional service. Then ekatvam anupashyata, right? Oneness. What did we say? Oneness in quality. One in quality with the Lord. Yes. One in, also one in desire, uh, interest. Our interest is service to the Lord. Our desire is to please the Lord, to give pleasure to Him. So that's the oneness of the devotee. Devotees are one. They have the one desire to please Krishna, to satisfy Krishna. And then Shuddham and Appa Vidam. Appa. Cannot be contaminated. The, uh huh. And Shudam? Uh 
Apabidam is cannot be contaminated, but Shudam means purifying, right? Purifying, antiseptic. The dirty plates can, can be purified by the presence of Krishna. So even our hearts may be dirty, but if we chant Hare Krishna, we'll become a pure place. Then Haranmayena Patrena Satyasya Pehitam Mukam. What do we mean? Satyasya Pehitam Mukam? see the face of the Lord. Yes, we want to see the face of the Lord. We pray to Krishna, remove that light, remove that cup, that bright effulgence. I don't want to be bothered with all this effulgence. I want to see your face. I want to see your form. Right? So personal application, our realizations on the statement, Om Kratosmara Kritamsmara. our realizations, the, how important it is for us. That it's very important for us to take every opportunity to try to do some service for Krishna, to make some sacrifices for Krishna, to chant the holy name and to read the books about Krishna and discuss Krishna. So it's very important. Why? Because at the end of life, at the time of death, that will all be taken into account. Krishna will say, oh, I remember. Oh, that Gandharvika Radharani, oh yeah, she studied Bhakti Shastri. She tried so hard, she worked so hard studying and coming to classes, hearing the classes every night. Yeah, Krishna remembers all the service we have done. So we take, we take every opportunity to try to do more service because we know it's all for our benefit. It goes into our spiritual bank account and it makes it easier for us to go back home, back to Godhead. Right? That's the realization. Sri Shapanishad. Subtitle, The Knowledge That Brings One Nearer to the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna. Concluding quote. Someone... Who's going to read? Sakyaras, Mataji, are you there? Yes, Maharaj. Please read. The, uh, the entire process is hinted at in this mantra, Mantra 18 and Srimad Bhagavatam 1.2.17-20 explains it further. Here Chanting the glories of the Lord is itself an act of piety. By hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, one becomes cleansed of all undesirable things, and then one's devotion becomes fixed upon the Lord. At this stage, the devotee acquires the Brahminical qualifications and the effects of the lower modes of nature, passion and ignorance completely vanish. Mm -hmm. The devotee becomes fully enlightened by virtue of his devotional service and thus he comes to know the path of the Lord and the way to attain him. As all doubts diminish, he becomes a pure devotee. Mantra 18 to 4. Jai! Are you becoming a pure devotee, Sakiras Maharaj? Trying my level best, Maharaj. Okay, you're getting rid of the passion and ignorance? I'm still trying, Maharaj. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it takes time. It's not so easy. But we keep trying. That's right. That's the important thing, that we keep Thank trying. Devote, we have to become fixed and gradually <laughs> takes effect. Okay. So, let me see. Now we were going to do... Uh, I 
wanted to go over these uh, questions with you. Okay, we can answer these questions. Let's go over everything. Right, this is... Do you have these questions in your book, in the student book? Yes, Maharaj. Did you answer all of them? Um, most of it, yes. Okay, let's go over it all. Number one, what's the meaning of the word Veda? Knowledge. Knowledge, Maharaj. Yeah. Okay. Four defects of a conditioned soul? Committing mistakes, committing propensity, imperfect senses. Okay. The three pramanas? Um, pratyaksha pramana, anumana pramana, shabda pramana. Okay. Can you give the English meaning? Pratyaksha means? Direct sense perception. Yeah. Anumana is hypothesis, a theory based on evidence. Shabda is hearing from a bona fide authority. Okay. Can you give reasons why Shabda Praman is a superior means of acquiring knowledge? Why Shabda Praman is um, a superior means of acquiring knowledge? This one. Somebody? Who knows? Any Sakira Smadiji? You got an answer for this? Um, I think because we hear from bona fide authority, Maharaj. Hear from a hear from a perfect person, right? Yes, Maharaj. Yeah, if you hear from a perfect person, who is the perfect person? Krishna, the scriptures, Maharaj, Krishna. Yeah, if you hear from scriptures and if you hear from sadhu and guru. Dira. Yeah, dira, somebody who is dira, who is... Okay. But what are the two systems of knowledge, number five? Shruti and Smriti. No. No? No, not Shruti and Smriti. Two systems... Vidya and Maharaj. No. Inductive and deductive. What? Inductive and deductive. Yes. Is it ascending it, and descending? That's right. Uh, yes. Inductive and deductive. Uh, ascending and descending. Right. That's the two systems of knowledge. The ascending and the descending. Ascending descending. Mm. Number six, what are the two qualifications of a bona fide guru? Attains knowledge from disciplic succession, be firmly established in Brahman. Okay, he should be established in the Brahman, Brahmanishta, and he must be in the disciplic succession. He should be connected. Okay, he should be trained by. Okay, number seven, mantra from mantra one. English meaning of the term Ishya Vashya. God-centered conception. God-centered God conception. Okay, good. Yes. Para and Apara Prakriti. Para is superior energy. Apara is inferior material energy. Okay. And the Bhagavata communism. Spiritual communism. Okay, yeah. spiritual communism. And Apurusha? Word spoken by the Lord. Okay, spoken by the Lord without any, cannot have any defect. Perfect, yeah, because coming from the Lord. Mantra 2, define karma, akarma and vikarma. Okay, karma first of all. Of one's prescribed duty is mentioned in the revealed scriptures. Okay, one's prescribed duty as mentioned in the scriptures, yes. And akarma? Actions that free from the 
free one from the cycle of birth and death. Very good. Yes, actions which free one from birth and death. V karma. Actions that are performed through the misuse of one's freedom. Okay. Yes. Very good. Misuse of one's freedom. V karma. Mantra three. Give the English meaning of the term atmaha. Okay. Yes, killer of the soul. Define the word sura and asura. Cognizant of these responsibilities and who work in that spirit. So that's sura. Asura is neglectful of these responsibilities or those who have no information of them. What responsibilities? Um, devotional service. Well, Sura, I'll have to look and see the text, Mantra 3. How did you describe it again, Gandharvika? Um, I said that Sura is cognizant of the responsibilities and those who work in that spirit. Cognizant of the responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Which, but what responsibilities? Well, I, I don't know. Uh, let me. See. You have to look at the text. You know. Okay. Uh, where's my text? <laughs> Mantra three. Sounds a little not so clear. Moment oh, one. Mantra three. Okay. It's the second line of the purport, Maharaj. Okay, Sura. Those who are king of these. Okay, human life is distinguished from animal life due to its heavy responsibilities. So those who are cognizant of the responsibility of human life. You have to say, you have to say what responsi which responsibilities you mean. So, those who, are, those who understand the responsibilities of human life and who work in that spirit are called godly persons. And those who neglect the responsibilities of human life and have no information of them are asuras or demons. Okay? Is that all right? Maharaj, can we quote from the Bhagavad Gita, like suras are people who believe in God, or should we just take the text from? I think yeah, but we're, because we're working with the issue Panishad, you have to answer according to the text. Yeah, we have to deal with the text. If you go, if you go back to the other things, then it's not very good. It, it, it may be right, but because, you know, the questions are based on the Ishopanishad, so you should take the meaning from the texts. Alright, Maharaj. Uh -huh. And what is Antaryami? Sorry? The one who witnesses everything. Okay, the, all right, the witness of everything. In other words, it's the, the Antaryami refers to? Paramatma. Paramatma, yes, right. Paramatma. Yes, Paramatma, referring to the Paramatma. Give the English meaning of the phrase, Tadure Tadvantike. <laughs> Oh, you're not you're not seeing my screen. Okay, wait. I'll just move it back. Thank you, thank you, Now can you see it, Prabhu? Uh, no, Maharaj. Oh, I'm not 
seeing it. Are you sharing your screen, Maharaj? Yeah. Uh, yes, Maharaj. You can see yes, it now? now? we can see. Oh. Yes, now we can see it, Maharaj. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Good. Okay. All right. So we're number, number mantra five, English meaning of the phrase Tadure Tadvantike. far away, but he is very near as well. Yes, we said that, right? We, we had it just earlier, just five minutes ago. One who is far away, but is very near as well. Mantras five, uh, six to eight give the English meaning of the term ekat vamana pashyata. We had that many times. Shudam apapavidam, we had that. And how is the Lord unembodied? Who remembers? Nantini? The Lord does not have a material body. Right. He does not have a material body. He has a body though, right? Yes, Maharaj. But not a body of the material world. He has a spiritual body. All right. Number 11. Give the English meaning of the name Haranya Kashipu. Nantini? Hiranya means good. Kashipuni Yes. Do you like that name? No. <laughs> you don't like gold? You don't like soft bed? What's wrong with you? <laughs> so, Mama, should we uh, split the word and give the meaning, or should we just give the meaning as? Yeah, you, should, you, you have to give it the way it's given it. It, it. Haranya means gold, Kashipu means soft bed. How else will you do it? You know, I don't know how else you could do it. Number 16, the miseries of the material world serve to indirectly remind us of what? Who knows? Nantini, do you know? Really no, you're too young. You wouldn't know about these things. Yeah. <laughs> you, have, you need more time to know about the miseries of the material world, right? You're too innocent. What about Tanusha Mataji? Do you know Mataji? Are you there tonight? Hare Krishna Maharaj, yes, I'm here. Okay. Do you know about the mis why are the mis what are the miseries there to remind us of? I'm not sure, Maharaj. Really? Yes. What, what about Intira Mataji? Sorry, Maharaj, I'm not able to keep that answer. Mary, do you know? Mary? Maharaj, can I say? Who's this? Who's going to answer? Maharaj, can I try? Who are you? What's your name? <laughs> Madhuri Tulsi. Madhuri Tulsi, yeah, please. Birth, death, old age and disease. What? The miseries of the material world are there to remind us of birth, old age, disease and death? <laughs> well, I think the answer is that the miseries of the material world serve to remind us that this is not our real home, that our real, our real home is in the spiritual world. That we don't belong here, and then we should go back home to, our, to the spiritual world, and then we'll get, there won't be all these miseries. So these miseries are here just to remind us that we don't belong here and that we have to get out and we have to go back to Krishna. I think that's the real reason, the miseries. Okay, give the English meaning of the term Haranmayena Patrina. Yeah, we had that. Oh, okay, well, very quick, we covered everything, right? All the analogies are there. Analogies, oh my goodness, so many, huh? Ooh, look at all the analogies, ooh, so many. 
Okay, we have to go through the analogies because you have to know these. They may ask you about these. Oh, from the introduction. Okay, take one each. You can read one. Ram Gopinath Prabhu, read this one from the introduction. to be like the mother. We take so much knowledge from our mother. For example, if you want to know who your father is, who can answer you? Your mother. Similarly, if you want to know something beyond your experience, beyond your experimental knowledge, beyond the activities of the senses, then you have to accept the Vedas. Okay. So we have to understand these things. Who is the mother? Shruti. Shruti is the mother. What, what is the meaning of Shruti? Directly mother. Shruti is hearing, referring to the hearing process. But in this particular case, what, what is being talked about? Shruti? Authority. The Vedas, the four Vedas, the Shruti mantras, the Shruti, the Shruti means the Vedas, the original Vedas. You have to accept the Vedas, the four Vedas, right? That's the, the Shruti. Let me say that you have, I, I only accept Shruti, I don't accept Smriti, means I only accept the four Vedas. So the Shruti is like the mother, your mother. If you want to know something beyond the knowledge, beyond the, the senses, you have to hear from the Vedas. We cannot understand about the higher planets, about life on other planets, but we can hear from the Vedas. We can hear about heaven, we can hear about hell, we can hear from the Vedas. Okay, invocation. Who's not read yet? Madhuta Simatiji, please read invocation. Yes, Mother. The hand of a body is complete unit only as long as it is attached to the complete body. When the hand is revealed from the body, it may appear like a hand, but it actually has one of the, sorry, has none of the potencies of a hand. Has none. Has none of the potencies, yeah. Yes, has none of the potencies of a hand. Similarly, living beings are part and parcel of the complete whole, and if they are severed from the complete whole, the illusory representation of completeness cannot truly satisfy them. Right. Cannot fully satisfy them. Right. So, we are like part of the whole, right? Who is the complete whole? Absolute truth. Yeah, the absolute truth. We are, and we are part of the absolute truth, right? But Prabhupada gives an example, just like if the hand is cut off from the body. So is it any good? You find the hand cut off from the body, the hand is useless, cannot do anything. So the same way, when we are disconnected from the complete whole, from the complete whole, then we are also not much use. We have to connect ourselves. Okay, so mantra one. Punita Mataji is there tonight? Yes, Maharaj, I'm here. Mantra one. The capitalist cannot curb the communists simply by political maneuvering, nor can the communists defeat the capitalists simply by fighting for stolen bread. If they do not recognize the proprietorship of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, all the property they claim to be their own, stolen. So who do the communists say is the proprietor? The people? Yeah, the, they say everything belongs to the people or to the state, right? To the government, to the state. And, and the capitalists say, who do they say everything belongs to? To the government. Yeah, it belongs to me, the capitalist, it's mine, I work for it, it's my company, my, my business, my money. 
But ultimately, we say every devotee says everything belongs to Krishna. So Prabhupada said they're like fighting for stolen bread. All the property they claim to be their own is stolen. <laughs> it's not theirs. They, cl they claim it's mine, but they, Prabhupada said it's all stolen. Stolen from who? Krishna. From Krishna, right. Okay. Mantra 3, somebody read, who's not read yet? Uh, I read my writing. Okay. The people sometimes compare to an ocean. And the human body is compared to a solid boat designed especially to cross the ocean, cross this ocean. The Vedic scholars and the Acharyas or Sainti teachers are compared to expert boatmen. And the facilities of the human body are compared to favorable breezes that help the boat fly smoothly to its desired destination. If with all these facilities, a human being does not fully utilize his life for self-realization, he must be considered Atmaha, a killer of the soul. Okay. So Prabhupada's give here we got this the example about the boat, right? What's compared to the boat? The body. The human body, right. Human body. And what's the ocean? The material world? Yes, the material world. And how are we going to cross the ocean? Who is the boatman? Oh, the Acharyas. Yeah, the, spirit, the Vedic scriptures and the Acharyas are saintly teachers. They're the boatmen. All right? And the facilities of the human the facility of the human body are? The breeze of yeah, you need a good breeze, you need a good breeze to cross the ocean, so the facilities of the human life are that. So if with all these facilities, if we don't use it, then no self-realization. If we don't utilize all these facilities for self-realization, then what is our situation? Atmaha. Atmaha, yes, we are the killer of the soul. Okay. Mantra 4. Who's not read yet? Kundalata. Mary, you can read. Mary. I'm reading. Okay. In the Vishnu Purana, its potency are compared to the heat and light that emanate from a fire. Although situated in one place, a fire can distribute its light and heat for some distance. Similarly, the absolute personality of God, although fixed in his transcendental abode, can diffuse his different energies everywhere. Okay, yes. So the energies of the Lord are like compared to like the heat and the light from the fire. So the Lord has his different energies compared. It's like from the fire, the heat and light is spread. So the energies of the Lord are spread everywhere. Yes, all right. Mantra number seven. Mary, are you there tonight? Yes, yes, I'm can read mantra 7. I, I will read mantra 7. The living entity, just as the sparks of a fire, are qualitatively one with the fire. And yet, sparks are not fire as far as quantity is concerned. For the quantity of heat and light present in the sparks is not equal to that in fire. These qualities are present in minute quantity for the living entity is but a minute part and parcel of the supreme whole. To use another example, the quantity of salt present in a drop is never comparable to the quantity of salt present in the complete ocean. But the salt present in the drop is qualitatively equal in chemical composition to all 
<laughs> yeah. Okay, so qualities. One one in quality, different in quantity. Good. Mantra nine. Who's not read yet? Yes, oh yeah, please. Jo Jolene, huh? Jolene here. Yes, please read. The advancements of learning by a godless person is as dangerous as a valuable jewel on the hood of a cobra. A cobra decorated with a valuable jewel is more dangerous than one not decorated. In the Hari Bhakti Sudol Daya 3.11.12, the advancement of education by a godless people is compared to decorations on a dead body. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Prabhupada is giving these examples. The cobra with the jewel is more dangerous. Why? Why is it more dangerous? Poisonous. Because the jewel is very valuable, people will try to come to Right. The jewel will be valuable, will attract people. Cobra is still cobra is dangerous, poisonous, right? So then we Prabhupada quotes then the someone about advancement of education by godless people is like decoration on a dead body. Decoration on a dead body, does that do any good to decorate a dead body? What do you think? When the body's dead, do we do we want to decorate it nicely? <laughs> oh, it doesn't do any good really to decorate the dead body. So this, this education of godless people, it's like that, useless, because they don't know how to use the education. They will misuse it, they will abuse it, they would simply use their advancement for sense gratification. That's the problem. Okay, Mantra 12, who would like to read, Ga Gandharva, Gandharvika you could read. Okay, so Mantra 12, the advancement of education by a godless person is more dangerous than one who worships the demigods and attains to their material planet still remain in the darkest region of the universe. The whole universe is covered by the gigantic material element. It is just like a coconut covered by a shell and half filled with water. Since its covering is airtight, the darkness within is dense, and therefore the sun and the moon are required for illumination. Alright, so in Malaysia people, everybody knows they're very familiar with coconuts. Some places, some places, you know, if you go to Russia, you wouldn't know what a coconut is. <laughs> Difficult. Okay, so the example of the coconut is like the universe. And Nantini, you can finish Mantra 13. Yes, Maharaj. A person who has purchased a ticket for Calcutta can reach Calcutta, but not Bombay. But the so-called spiritual masters say that any and all paths will take one to the supreme goal. So, is that a good spiritual master? No. No. No, that's the, they're the, they're the bogus, the so-called spiritual master. They're not genuine, right? Okay, so those are the different quotes which you would be want you want to try to memorize the different analogies. They're useful in preaching sometimes, very good. So I think we've covered everything quite well. I think there's nothing much more to be done. Any final questions from anyone? Maharaj, I have one question, Maharaj. Yes, please. We have some e extra questions, such as, uh, discuss examples from Srila Prabhupada's life. Uh, showing his application of Issa Vashyam principle. Okay. How do we uh, answer this question, Maharaj? Srila Prabhupada, in Srila Prabhupada's life, how he applied the Isha Vashya principle. Well, yes. it, you know, he was very careful with everything. He didn't waste things. 
Prabhupada described that even in, when he was a child, if some rice would fall to the floor and fa fall between the floorboards, his father would have him pick it up. He wouldn't waste it. And uh, when Prabhupada, when he would get a letter, he would open the envelope because in Prabhupada's time everything was like snail mail, you know, snail mail, and so it would come in an envelope. So Prabhupada would use the envelope and he would open the envelope and he would, he would write on the envelope. He would use the envelope for paper. So he was very careful uh, to you, not to waste things. If a tap was running and nobody was there, he would turn, up, turn off the tap. He didn't like to see anything wasted. Uh, the, the lights and the fan, he would always say, don't, if you leave the, the room, then turn off the light and turn off the fan. Don't leave them running because you're just spending money, wasting money. It's Krishna's money. Be careful not to waste anything. Purchasing in the market also, he would want to get the good best price for Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Just now, uh, uh, I didn't hear you put on uh, coconut and uh, the land. There was one section that was disconnected. What were you saying, Maharaj? I was saying uh, the the leaves, the brand different leaves from the trees. Prabhupada would see, you know, they use them to make different things, like. Uh, they, they can get the leaves, they put them together, they make leaf plates and they get uh, some leaves from some, some uh, big branches from the tree. They use them to make brooms. They have these type of brooms, you know. Nowadays we use everything, it's all plastic and things, you know. And you get these uh, very, uh, very uh, man-made things. But in Prabhupada's time, particularly in India, Everything was more basic and natural, and in the villages especially, even today, they still use things like that, the, the brooms, the brushes, they're made from different things from the trees. So Prabhupada liked us to do these kind of things, to use that. He didn't like us to waste anything. Knowing that Krishna is a proprietor, that belongs to Krishna, so we should use it carefully, use everything nicely in Krishna's service. And offer everything to Krishna, of course. That's also Ishyavashya. And Prabhupada would keep accounts also, even when he was alone. When he was alone, he would write out his accounts, how much he spent for the buy oil, how much he spent to buy spices. Oh, he kept records of everything. He was very careful with Krishna's money. So that's the Ishavasha spirit in Prabhupada's life. He went to America. You know, he went to America, he stayed in America for some time. And when he came back, after more than a year or more, he still had the 60 rupees which he had when he left India. <laughs> he still had his 60 rupees, he kept the 60 rupees. So he was very careful with everything, knowing it belongs to Krishna. So he used everything carefully, especially his own life, his human, the human life. He used it fully in the service of Krishna. And when his son came to him, at one point his son came to see Prabhupada and his son wanted that Prabhupada should help him because the son had grown up and he was getting married and he wanted, he thought, my father should help me, help me start a business. So Prabhupada told him, he said, yeah, you can sell my books. And he told his son that he should go around and try to sell his, Prabhupada's books, the Srimad Bhagavatam. 
take orders for the books. So like that he tried to engage his family in the service of Krishna also. Is that all right, Madhiji? Yes, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay, let me see. What are these other questions? Describe in your own words practical ways and benefits of applying Isavasya, society in general. Practical ways and benefits of, of applying the Ishavasya. Society in general, practical way, benefits. Benefits. If, if people learn everything belongs to Krishna, then maybe people won't be so greedy and so and fight and be envious of each other. If we say everything belongs to Krishna, people can live together more peacefully, more happily. So in ISKCON, in ISKCON we, we try to apply this principle that everything belongs to Krishna, Krishna's temple. Devotees all working for Krishna and taking care of Krishna's temple. Do devotees donate their money, their hard-earned money for the service of Krishna. And in our own life, if we see Krishna is this in the center of everything, we'll be peaceful, we'll be more detached, we'll be more, we can be happier and we can focus more on devotional service. Because in material life we're all focused on, we're thinking what's for me. But if we understand everything is Krishna's, then we won't be so attached to everything. And we'll be happier working for Krishna. Number two, explain in your own words how the process of spiritual life given to us by Srila Prabhupada enables us to achieve a balanced program of spiritual and material knowledge. We spoke about that quite a bit, right? Spiritual and material knowledge. By living in Krishna consciousness, we study Srimad Bhagavatam, we get knowledge about the spiritual world, but we also get knowledge about our own mind and senses. We understand how much we're controlled by material desires and how much we're influenced by the modes of passion and ignorance. So the Krishna conscious program helps us to become more aware. We become more aware of our our faults, we see more our, our problems. Krishna consciousness helps us to correct these problems also. Yeah, we can describe these things, experience the devotee, how devotees change. Before they come to Krishna consciousness, we may be lazy and dirty, but after we become devotees, then we become, we wake up early and we work hard. And we neat and clean, so we, we change by practicing devotional service. Establish, number three, establish in your own words, evidence from Ishupanishad purpose, Prabhupada's Ishupanishad lectures, the personal form of the Lord. Oh, okay. So, haranmayena patrina satyasya pihitam mukam. Right? In the Ishopanishad it's mentioned like that. The Lord has a form. And then it said also, He can overcome all others running. So if He can overcome all others running, in the Ishopanishad it says like that, powerful demigods cannot approach Him. He can overcome all others running. It means He's a person. And we are, we are persons. If He's not a person, then we, we must be greater than him. How could we be persons if he's not a person? He must also be a person, but he's a perfect person. We are imperfect persons, but we are also persons. Prabhupada explains like that in the Ishopanishad, that we cannot be greater, we cannot be something God is not. We can't be greater than him. He's the greatest. So we are persons, he's also a person. If we say he's not a person, 
then we're minimizing, we're, we're, denying, we're saying there's something incomplete. But he's complete. He's complete. It means he's both impersonal and personal. He's everything within, that, within our experience and beyond it. Okay, it's a good preaching topic, right? These are open book assessments. You can look there and read these different things in the book. So, it's a nice exercise for you to think about these things and understand everything. Any more questions? So, I want to thank all of you anyway for giving me the opportunity to go over the Ishopanishad with you. And I very much enjoyed your association. I think you have some nice potential here in Malaysia with all of you people preaching. You learn this knowledge of Bhakti Shastri, you'll become very powerful preachers. You'll be able to go and preach this knowledge everywhere where you're working, where you're meeting people. You can also give classes in the temple, be very good, make your own pro program, have a Bhakti Priksha group or start to have classes and you know, make little programs, do preaching because I see you're all very good, you have a good knowledge, you learn very quickly and so I think you have great potential to distribute this Krishna conscious knowledge everywhere. So I thank you all very much for giving me the opportunity to present this knowledge with you. Well, in this time when I'm on lockdown, <laughs> keep me busy having classes with you every day. I'm going to miss your association. But I wish you all good luck in your Bhakti Shastri and hopefully I will see you in Malaysia in the near future. Okay? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Tiaga Prabhu would like to give some closing remarks. Okay, Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Chaga Prabhu. Hare, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Please accept my humble please accept my humble obeisances, Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Yeah, all glories to Prabhupada. On behalf of the devotees, the Bhakti Shastri team, Sri Jagannath Mandir, Kuala Lumpur, and the Temple Management Committee.